What's going on guys? David Edwards here. If you've been following me about two weeks ago, I had long hair. I was starting to look like a hippie. And I got it shaved and I got a beard going on and uh, yeah. So we're gonna get into it with uh, Buddhism and the two greatest innovators that I can think of and a lot of other people, if you know anything about these two characters, you would say that yeah, they were two, two of the greatest innovators who ever lived. And it's undeniable that what they did for the world as far as technology and innovation and invention had a profound effect on society as a whole. You know, I couldn't be communicating with you if it wasn't for this iPhone and this video editing software I'm going to use that comes with my iPhone and my, and my MacBook and also just wireless that Nikola Tesla, which was a product or innovation of Nikola Tesla. Both of these men studied Eastern philosophy, a Western man that studied Western men that studied Eastern philosophy. So one of the things about Eastern philosophy, and Nikola Tesla is quoted for saying this, Eastern philosophy is the only religion that modern science can entertain. Now, I hope anybody who's a Christian, I'm not, you know, I'm not denying my Christian faith at all. And I'm just somebody who likes to study other cultures and other religions. And I find it fascinating, very fascinating, that uh, Tesla and Jobs both studied Eastern philosophy. And Jobs studied it to the point to where he traveled to India to seek out a guru to help him reach spiritual enlightenment. Very, very interesting stuff here. And in Eastern philosophy, it teaches you to develop your intuition, your understanding of the world. It's about kind of giving up self and becoming one with the universe and feeling your call. And what's really weird is, so Steve Jobs, and one of the things about Eastern philosophy and, you know, different from the Western world is it's a reduction of materialistic things, as in Man of the West is all about your boat, your car, your big house, all this kind of stuff. And in East, you know, with Eastern philosophy, it's more of us, you know, finding your spiritual being, and that's more important than your material possessions, which kind of take you away from, you know, God or your spiritual purpose. And so... With that said, Steve Jobs comes back from India. When he founds Apple, uh, he becomes one of the richest men in the world and one of the largest corporations in the world. Apple was after he left um, studying Eastern philosophy. Now, Steve Jobs wasn't materialistic even after. I mean, he did drive a nice car and live in a, in a, in a nice house, but if you read his biography, he wasn't to the point, he didn't live a really lavish lifestyle, and that wasn't as important to him as his calling in the world, which he found when he studied Eastern philosophy. His calling was to create innovative products that would change the world, and he was focused on putting a dent in the universe. So even though he became a Western man, you know, you know successful businessman, he still followed these principles of Eastern philosophy, didn't live in a house, he could have lived in a a way bigger house than he lived in. And like I said, that wasn't important to him. But Steve Jobs grew up in the hippie era. And a lot of these hippies would go to Buddhist temples and learn about Eastern spirituality and stuff like that. And it was an important thing to Jobs. Now Jobs, he went to, he was adopted. And when he was 12 years old, he went to a Christian church. And did he reject Christianity? I mean, I mean, you kind of be the, the, the person who makes that decision, but he goes to, uh, when he was 12, his parents, his adopted parents want, wanted him to have a religious upbringing. So they take him to a Christian church and he asks his Sunday school teacher, he says, does God know everything? And the Sunday school teacher said, yes. And then he says, does God know which finger I'm about to lift? And the Sunday school teacher said, yes, God knows everything. And then he asked the Sunday school teacher, he had brought this newspaper article about these kids that were like starving in a third world country. He whoops it out and he says, well, if God knows everything, then why doesn't he do something about this? And he hands it to the Sunday school teacher. So Steve Jobs, obviously rebellious by nature, you know, maybe he just wanted to be different, but I do believe that him finding his intuition, and we're going to get into in Nikola Tesla here in a little bit, had something to do with a scientific contribution he would make, well, computers and inventiveness. And I'm not trying to be dismissive towards Christianity. Like I said, I'm not giving up Christianity, and I'm also studying other religions and learning about other people here. But at the same time, if you look at his contributions with Apple and how Eastern philosophy taught Steve 
to find, you know, to to ask questions, to find his intuition, to, you know, it's a it's a very, very, you know, examine your surroundings, ask questions type religion, as in with Christianity, if you look at what it's done to science, and here recently, you know, it's obvious that there's a lot of good Christian-based institutions and a lot of good Christian inventors and innovators. I'm not saying that you have to go be a Buddhist or study Eastern philosophy to be a great scientist or an innovator, but the two greatest ones I can think of did study Eastern philosophy. And if you look at, like, for example, with Galileo, and when Galileo questioned the church about, he, you know, he made the, the claim that the earth revolved around the sun instead of the sun revolving around the earth, and he had scientific evidence to prove this, he was, he was killed for this. And so in Christianity, and it's, it, there's different levels of strength of, you know, you can use science or, you know, you, you can't question the church or any ideas of Christianity at all to the point to where Galileo was killed. That was a very strong example of a Christian, you know, sect that killed him because his ideas were different. And, like, there's a lot of institutions. Obviously, if you have, if it was 500 years ago, a lot of these classes that we have, like this school that I'm looking at going to after at some point is Christian-based, and they teach, you know, all the all the modern sciences. And it's a, you know, progressive school. It's, it's a great school. And there's a lot of Asian exchange students there that aren't Christian, so it's very welcoming, and I like that aspect of it. But here's the thing. Buddhism is different than Christianity as in you can ask questions, and you're encouraged to ask questions. So with Tesla, we're going to get into it with Tesla because Tesla is a freak of nature, okay? He's different. Both of these men are very eccentric. They were odd in ways, nothing to do with Christianity or Christianity or Eastern philosophy, but they were just odd individuals, and they had you know quirks and character flaws, um, Nikola Tesla was definitely OCD and definitely had these, you know, phobias and these weird beliefs about stuff. And he was raised by an Orthodox priest in um, Croatia where he was born. And he migrated to America to work for Thomas Edison. And, you know, clashed with Thomas Edison and then got funded by uh, George Westinghouse and started his own company where they... You know, we're learning about alternating current, but his imagination turned at a completely different frequency that I believe than most people. And and I, not, again, I'm not trying to bash Christianity here, but Nikola Tesla did quote this. Eastern philosophy is the only religion that modern science can entertain. Now, you got this man who invented... Who, whose contributions range from alternating current to wireless to x-rays to basically all of the electronic modern age, digital age, information age that we live in is based off of so many things that he contributed. And he would lucid dream and invent things while he was sleeping. That's, that's how much of a freak of nature he is. And... What's crazy is um, that his mind turned at this frequency and he had all these quirks and everything. But there's a period of his life where he studied Eastern philosophy when he was in his inventive stage. And um, if you read his autobiography, it talks about out-of-body experiences and all this kind of stuff that's you know really uh, beyond my understanding and you know where what he did, you know, how he changed the world through his inventions and how he came up with this stuff. But is, are these men studying Eastern philosophy? Did it have effect on their thinking? It absolutely did. And there's no question about the idea that if you're studying something that tells you to examine your surroundings and you know, follow your intuition. That's a very creative and innovative, you know, type thought process that it invents, you know, or creates for people. And at the same time, you don't have to study Eastern philosophy to be creative or to be innovative. And, um, but it's just one of the things about like, and I'm glad for the church that I've gone, gone to, 
they don't claim I'm going to go to hell for studying, you know, Eastern philosophy. And I'm going to get to the point to where I'm probably going to wear a robe. I'm going to go meditate with someone to find a guru who can, and I'm going to eventually travel to Asia. But I just think it's crazy about, you know, if you look at the, the two greatest innovators and their ties to Eastern philosophy, and I just think it's just people in general should just, you know, instead of dismissing other cultures and other sections of the world, so we might not say these Asian cultures are more advanced than us, but because of their lack of placing materialistic, you know, if you look at like our buildings and our um, advancement through like, you know, we, we look at our well-being as our material possessions, what house you live in, um, what you drive, and you know, like I said, your boat, and like where you go on vacation. And, and here in the, in the Eastern culture, it's not as much of an emphasis on that. Are they below or above us? They're just different, and they have ideas that we can infuse. Like I, like I love how Steve Jobs infused both. If, and, you know, if he infused both the emphasis of finding your spiritual being and find, finding your call, but he also, you know, he had to be a practical businessman to do what he did, and he was. He was a great businessman, but it's just something interesting to think about. And that's the, that was, this is today's topic Hopefully this video encourages somebody to get out there and read about other people and not throw stones at other people who are different, but say, hey, these people got something that we can learn from and we can kind of share with each other. Thank you.